I've wanted to try electrolysis for quite some time and I got this anvil from, or not, sorry, not anvil. I got this uh, old vice from my dad that is, uh, I don't want to dip in vinegar like most of my, uh, most of my steel. Um, so I decided to finally get off my butt and get the electrolysis rig together. There's a power supply I picked up a couple years ago. Um, this should give me, I think it's going to give me five volt out and it's, uh, I forget what the current rating is, but we're just going to try it out. here, And this I got from my dad. It is a bayonet. I have no idea what era it's from. It doesn't, uh, it doesn't have any markings. The handle is brass and steel. You can see where this, uh, there's a, a steel locking pin or an iron locking pin in here. Probably locks, locked it in place. Come on. There you go. You can see that in there. It's pretty rusted. The, uh, the brass is, uh, is dented, not in great shape. I don't know if this pin, if there was something in there. It's hard to tell, but might be a little harder to see here, but yeah, that's, I mean, I didn't degrease it or anything. I probably should have, but yeah, right, so I just it. shut it down. I saw a reaction. I mean, and it's only been like a few minutes. I, I didn't like what was happening. Yeah. There's my copper electrode. I didn't really like what looked like it was going on there. Um, hmm. So uh, I went and got the uh, proper information and figured out what I was doing wrong. I had my sacrificial anode and uh, my cathode reversed. So it looks like it looks like that copper will be fine, but it's got to be on the negative, and your sacrificial anode has to be on the positive. Show show you all this. So this is just a few minutes. And that is the uh, everything that has uh, collected on that sacrificial anode. Apologize for the glare off the water, but uh, and you can see. Yeah, that is quite impressive. And that is just uh, that's just five volts. That's not the typical. Uh, that's not the typical 12 volt battery charger that you see a lot of people using. You know, it's developed some, some eddies and swirls. All right, well that definitely doesn't look corroded or anything. So apparently there's nothing wrong with that. Huh. All right, well, not really much different. So this is the back side of that plate. Really nothing. So you can see that the reaction here is generally line of sight. So it's between the part. It's between your part in question and uh, your, your sacrificial anode. Because look at the back. I, I haven't wiped that or anything. So after four hours, this is uh, still proceeding very nicely. I'm going to have to... Uh, it, it, once I blow all the scum off the uh, surface, it reforms pretty quickly. Still got a lot of action. Um, all right, here we are, kind of moment of truth. Um, it has now been going on, let's see, started at 345 yesterday. It is 927 in the morning. So just shy of, uh, let's see, 345 would be 12 plus 6, so, all right, just shy of 18 hours. I'm going to turn it off. All right, let's take this out and see how it looks after 18 hours. Well, it's definitely blacker. Um, a lot of the rust has turned into it's you know what it's probably like some kind of black converted it to some kind of black iron oxide again well this doesn't look this doesn't look terribly different at all so i think what i'm going to do is i'm going to change out the solution maybe let this go all day i don't know i don't know if the brass looks better 
or if I need to polish this with something. And I actually got another piece in there. I, I, I don't know how well that's gonna connect and it's, you can see it's not making contact with it. I've changed the orientation of the knife and the goal is to cover it entirely and get more area, um, more area on more of the, uh, more of the knife itself. I'm actually gonna slide this over. I did start to notice on the handle, on one side of the handle, there's the appearance of what might be some kind of a maker's mark or it might be a forging mark, I don't know. Again, the only thing I do know about this is that it, it you know, with the brass handle and the steel, this, this wasn't any kind of a toy, but I have no idea how old it is or if it was ever used or from what country it's from. The goal is just to get it to cover this tip. Oh, and our start time is uh, 10.20. So, 10.20, um, I would like this to go eight more hours. So, about 6 o'clock, 6.30, maybe right before dinner. I'll shut it off and pull it out and see how it looks and see if there's there's any change. So we are yeah. a good seven hours into this, or uh, since I started 345 yesterday, it is uh, over 24 hours that it's been in solution. I'm really surprised at how the, uh, it, you know, the solution, how, how rusty and cloudy it was with rust and all that just kind of migrated to the edges of the tank uh, and the plates. Right, powers off. That is surprisingly clean, clear water. I am. That is crazy. Let's take this out and see what we got. Well, I don't know if this is supposed to happen. All right, I'm starting to see. You know. Uh, the brass looks pretty good. And it's still definitely got, I don't know what's all supposed to happen to this rust. That pin feels it's like it's maybe a little bit looser, but it's hard to tell. See, it seems like there might be some kind of a mark there. Again, hard to tell. And it's getting cleaner, I think, but not as quickly as I would have liked, I guess. All that agitation is a little bit misleading. I mean, even inside, you know, that's definitely loose now. I don't think that was loose before. I can actually unscrew that with my hand now. Oh, that's impressive. I just realized, come on, focus. I just realized there's now a number visible on the back end of it. I don't know, let's, let's get some light over here. Not getting anything from that. All right, all right I'm definitely gonna, definitely gonna leave it in longer. It's been about a, a week, just uh, wasn't able to get to this um, like I thought I would. So, to catch you up, uh, I'm not sure what the last thing uh, I've edited, or I've, I've put in the edited video, but I took, the, I took the knife out and I cleaned it up with some Scotch-Brite and all the black stuff just came right off. Um, so, it, I was definitely able to identify a matri maker's mark, which most likely turns out to be the name Reeve, which is an, an English foundry from the 1800s. Um, as well as a serial number, and I wasn't able to identify any other maker's marks, but I was able to go online and positively identify it. It is um, a model 1866 French sword bayonet. Um, I'll throw up all the particulars and the name, but uh, it was manufactured, I think, from 1866 to 1874 by several companies. This one in particular was made by a British company from Birmingham, England called Charles Reeves and Company. Uh, they were in business 
through the 1860s and went out of business in 1869. So the fact that this is a uh, serial number 3400, I would think that this has got to be made towards the latter part of the business. So I, I would guess it's 1868, 1869. Power's on. Uh, and you can already see got a good reaction with clear clean water you can really see that um, hopefully most of the reaction is taking place around that that new sacrificial anode and uh, I can get to some of the rust on the inside of the barrel ring well, that was definitely some kind of film on there so I've just made a slight adjustment to try and make sure that uh, that wire doesn't contact the barrel and then restarted it all of that stuff that was on there you can see some bigger pieces of it floating around I don't know what it is. It definitely wasn't rusty. Um, you see some of it forming on some of the other sacrificial anodes, but certainly not as, uh, to an extent, as great as his on that wire. Plan to let this run for about six to eight hours. It is uh, 6.53 in the morning. All right, it's been about 11 hours. And uh, you see the reaction still pretty vigorous and I'm going to shut down the power. All right, well, this is about the same as, uh, as it did, was before. You know, there's the uh, sacrificial anode. A lot of the rust that was on here is turned black. A lot of the metal is turned black, but I'll hit this with Scotch-Brite. Scrubbing some Scotch-Brite. See how much more we got to come off and then uh, see what it finally looks like All right here it is after a uh, another thorough cleaning I don't know that it's a lot better than it was before um, I guess now that I know what the likely manufacturer is I can kind of make out that that says Reeves but it should say Birmingham or it should say Berm B-I-R-M after that and it doesn't um, you can see the uh, barrel ring looks a little bit cleaner Definitely the barrel ring screw came out pretty nice. Uh, you know, not bad for 1860s England. I mean, those aren't bad threads. I, I, I wish I knew how they made those. Um, not to change the subject, I don't know if these here are any kind of other maker mar maker's marks. I mean, there's some, there's some lines there that look like they might be but it's really hard to tell. I can certainly imagine that there might be another mark there, but nothing that looks definitive. Um, and this I definitely suspect might be some kind of maker's mark. Um, a friend said he thought it might be just damage, and, and I guess it could be, um, but it doesn't look like there's corresponding damage. You know, if that had been lying down on that, now nah, I guess it could be. It's impossible to tell. This is still frozen, um, and I think because you can see, well, it's hard to see without any more light. Let's, you can see the catch, oh, there we go. You can see the catch in there is in the locked position. And there, of course, you can see the serial number. Thirty-four hundred. Uh, yeah, that's not bad. Reeves, and I think that's really that, that's really the only for sure maker's mark I can find on it. Um, you can see how damaged and deformed it is. I think we looked at this before. This pin should have been tight, but the body has been has been crushed from both ends here. Um, it's been pushed in here and it looks like that the pin was twisted in between that happening because it fits right in here in this depression perfectly. But then to get it to fit in the other one, it's actually got to push through and rotate slightly. It won't. Not bad. I think this is definitely the way to clean these. It definitely beats uh, for something like this for, you know, that might have any value as an antique uh, 
definitely beats cleaning it in vinegar or anything else that might damage the, the metal. All right, well, thanks for watching. Um, if you have any comments, please leave them down below. I'd love to know anything more about this uh, particular bayonet or this particular manufacturer. Thanks.